of all, I love this day because it's our customers who stand up here and talk about their experiences with data virtualization. And hopefully those of you who are new to data virtualization, that becomes a nice way for you to learn about it and also gain some confidence that people are getting real value out of data virtualization in their enterprises. In 2011 and now, it's much more about analytics. So instead of looking what happened, right, what went on in my business, which is more the business intelligence and reporting, it's about what's going to happen based on the data that I have and how I can analyze it. And you see down there at the bottom that real-time predictive business and customer analytics is the fastest uh, growing segment on this slide. But the last thing you want to do is take data that's out in the cloud and pull it back inside your enterprise. It's out there. It's a good place for it. Leave it there. Manage it there. This genie isn't going back in the bottle. Right? We, we kind of were able to push it back in when it was just transactional sources and just applications. But this is not, we can't get this back in the bottle. You have to deal with this reality. And if that wasn't enough, along comes mobile devices. So by introducing data virtualization into your data management mix, you start to get back to the idea that I can access all of my data, I can get uh, visibility into every part of my business, whether it's for compliance or risk or just planning, and I can do that without having to uh, rip and replace all of these physical systems that have been built up over the years. VMware did that with our physical machines. Data virtualization is doing that with our physical data silos. Forrester actually now calls this data virtualization just like we do. Gartner has a long-term vision for what they call the logical data warehouse. What are the drivers for the logical data warehouse? Well, I talked a little bit about fit-for-purpose data stores like Natiza. And if you look at the red, some solution designs simply should be different now. If you've got all this exhaust data, um, terabytes of it, it really doesn't make sense for you to move it into your warehouse. You may want to try to get insights from that right now from the raw data. A lot of this is being driven by younger, uh, newer uh, uh, entrants into the workforce who grew up with technology, grew up having um, uh, data at their fingertips, and, and they're not willing to um, uh, compromise on what data they get and when they get it. So they just want to go do it themselves. And they're very oriented towards self-service. And we, as IT professionals, should respond to that and enable that. And that's part of the logical data warehouse vision. Data virtualization has, currently has functionality in almost all of these areas and will continue to expand as we grow to become a logical data warehouse uh, provider. Federation is the idea that you can combine data from multiple sources and do a join. Right, that's sort of the traditional classic definition of federation. And it's an important piece of functionality. And it's a piece of functionality that data virtualization does very well. But federation isn't the only thing virtualization does. It also abstracts. It creates a business layer. It decouples. It provides caching. There's a lot of other things that virtualization does. And so it's, it's, uh, we don't want to limit it to just data federation. Our expertise is creating a logical view of your data. And as a result, we are very well aligned with this idea of a logical data warehouse. Auditing and performance evaluation, monitoring and governance. Um, and if you think about visibility into how your system is operating, you need to understand what it's doing and who's doing it. We do a lot of this today. We've got a monitor that helps you get visibility into your runtime cluster, et cetera. You get to actually define these canonicals the way you hoped to have them defined originally, but they just aren't. And that decoupling and that abstraction, here we go with that word again, allows you to create a business view catalog that looks a lot more like how you want to run your business than how it might physically be integrated. New York Stock Exchange has been using data virtualization for many years now. And they evolved to this picture, just like some of the other pictures I'm going to show you. They didn't start out with the Big Bang and boil the ocean and say, I'm going to create a logical data warehouse. What they did is they started using data virtualization and they evolved to this as part of their architecture. With traditional data integration methodologies, we deliver maybe what? Four? Is that optimistic? All right, six? All right. 24 data integration projects in two years by putting data virtualization in the mix and creating essentially a logical data warehouse layer as part of their architecture. And that's the compelling thing about this 
version, this early version of a logical data warehouse, is that they virtualize everything and then they consolidate when they must to meet SLAs. Okay, pretty interesting architecture. In order to actually do that analytics, they need the data from the cloud and they need the data from their Hadoop cluster. Can't do it without it. And they're not going to ETL all that into a warehouse. There's just no way. Right? So for them, the analysis that they wanted to achieve was compelling enough for them to put data virtualization over this. This is an evolution over the next several years. And uh, you'll see companies like IBM and Teradata start to promote this. IBM already does promote this idea of a logical data warehouse. But in order to actually achieve logical data warehouse and have a comprehensive data layer, you're going to need data virtualization. All of these companies and more use Composites data virtualization. They have success with it, they're growing in their use, and they're happy with it. A lot of them are here, I'm sure you've talked to some of them. So use a solution that works. This is a book that uh, Composite put together that is 10 in-depth case studies from our customers. And some of the customers I talked about today are in here. Three of these are up here because they're good examples of how they self-funded their first investment in data virtualization. I think if you talk to almost any one of our customers, the ROI case for their first project was compelling. If I can deliver data to the business where they say, holy cow, I've never been able to see that data before, that's compelling. I'd be happy to take questions, and then we can all go and uh, share a cocktail together. <laughs>